guys, it's Jess, and I am here with Shizuka, um, my human girl of my story. Um, she is in her bunny kigu that I made her. Uh, by the way, I hope to do a doll outfits video of the outfits that I made. One, because I'm pretty proud of some of the stuff that I made, and two, I just want to show off my dolls a little bit more, um, and have, like, a doll fashion show thing. Is that normal? Do other people do that? Just me? Um, but today I want to talk about fears and fears in the hobby, uh, or stuff, so basically the same thing. But... There, I've seen a little bit of a pattern because I looked at other videos to kind of get like kind of reference points to make sure I stay somewhat on topic. Um, and I seem to find that a lot of people have a problem with yellowing. Now, it's something that happens to dolls if you are unaware. Uh, any BJD dolls will yellow after time, even if you completely shut them away in the dark. It just happens to resin. Now, Shizuka, on the other hand, is vinyl, so I think she yellows, but I don't know how fast, or if it happens, or if you can clean it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but the reason why I didn't figure or find that out is because I'm not worried about yellowing. I've seen dolls that have yellowed. I've seen dolls that have yellowed so bad that they're all weird and splotchy. Well, I can't say weird, but they're very splotchy and they're very miscolored. But I have no problem with that, to be quite honest with you. Um, I find it interesting. Like, it's just the way of life of a doll. So that's not really a fear of mine. The main fear of my doll, uh, for my dolls and my hobby, is losing interest in the hobby. Um, because these dolls are very expensive, um, and it is a very expensive hobby, I kind of take solace in writing their stories and making things for them and, you know, sewing for them, having them together. And for me to lose interest in such a big thing with, it, it's because it's so big of a creative point in my life and could very well turn into, you know, a hobby I could, you know, one day get paid for or have lots of friends with. And I've already started to gain friends in the BJD community, which is awesome. And I don't really want to lose that. And, you know, with the friends that I've gained through, you know, Balls United Dolls, we have a lot of other things in common, but our main t gathering point is dolls. And I don't want to lose the great community that I've seen and have, and as well as the artistic aspect of it um, and the interest that I have. Because these are, like, the dolls themselves, it may sound weird, but they are my friends. You know, they they take up a lot of creative mindset and, I mean, you know, some people are just in this hobby because they look pretty and that's totally fine. But for me, it's more artsy and for other artists out there, I feel like you understand or people that want to be artistic but think they don't have the talent. You do have the talent, it's in there somewhere, you just have to find it. It may not be drawing. Um, I just had to throw that in there. Um, but it's, it's little pieces of your soul that you're giving out and your emotions, um, that go into your artwork, whether it be drawing or, you know, face-ups, writing their stories, making their clothes, their props, um, you know, designing them for other people or yourself, or just, you know, having them on display. You're still designing your own your character, whether it has a proper name or you just use the factory name. Um, and that's to me is really important and I'm very afraid of just, you know, saying, waking up one day and going, I don't like these dolls anymore. I just, I'm not interested in it. And for me, I haven't had the drive to want to draw or create for a very long time and having the ball jointed dolls come into my life and other dolls <laughs> um, really take a hold of my collector's interest, um, my collector's mind, uh, or whatever you want to call it, uh, has been really important and been very, you know, eye-opening for me and has been a very big part of my life, um, which may not sound like a lot, but I 
pretty much lived on off of my art. Um, not like like physically like I needed it to pay my bills or something but it was a very big emotional outlet for me and I stopped um, all drawing all writing everything that had to do with art and I suffered from it having these dolls come in and really break that for me really lifted my spirits in a way that I didn't think that I'd get my passion for art back so that's that's a very huge thing um minor ones minor fears uh breaking uh my dolls breaking obviously um more so the fact of them coming to me broken than me physically breaking them because if i do it i can always i can always get them fixed or get replacement parts but especially if it's a doll that i'm not super super attached to i mean even then i would just order new parts which would stink for like money um and the hassle of you know getting it and then it's broken and it's just like wow you've kind of ruined my first moment with this doll um which is a fear of mine but if i break it and i i can find a way around it um, because there's, uh, I don't know if it's new, um, I don't really, I try not to look at new dolls that are coming out because then I want more, and more and more and more, <laughs> um, but I will try to flash a picture somewhere on the screen, maybe over my face, maybe in this corner, um, of this new doll. I don't know its name because I didn't want to look at it too long because I really, really like it and, um, I was very interested in it. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that long long down the line when I'm able to or hopefully able to afford more dolls um that maybe I get like I buy a really broken one off of like Instagram or like eBay and it's really broken and I can change it into this doll um that I showed you because I think she's really awesome um and yeah she's a gore mod but I'm interested also in modification and that's another thing um about the yellowing if a doll yellows and i've hopefully it's been a long time and i'm not super attached to that doll anymore as of like storyline purposes because a couple of my dolls are very story driven and i feel like if they lose their purpose um i may just sell them and hopefully get another doll that i enjoy um if i don't enjoy them like artistically um, that I could modify them into a gore mod or some sort of project that I can make a new character out of. So that aspect I try to look on the bright side. But like I said, I really only have one major fear is losing interest in the hobby. As far as breakage, yellowing, um, and stealing but I feel like that's just everyone's fear and that's just like a normal thing to have for any object. I don't think I would take these girls anywhere where I would lose them like that um, because these cost me a lot of money and I will handcuff them to my face before anyone steals it. <laughs> um, so there's that. I can't really, th I couldn't really think of anything else. Um, that really pertain to fears. So basically that was the biggest part of my fear of the hobby. Um, I'm not really too worried about people who are mean because I have so many awesome people to turn to in this hobby um, to help me get through it or help me ignore them. I'm not really interested in like ganging up on somebody. Um, only if they're, you know, if I can report them to some authority figure or whatever, um, if it gets to that. Um, but as far as everything else, I'm pretty happy and am willing to take on the mortality of these dolls. So that has been my prompt number two, fear, uh, fear in the hobby. So thank you for watching and follow me on Instagram and Twitter and any of my other social medias that will be linked down below and on my actual YouTube page. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!